class of drivers that are going to be first out going wheel to wheel in search of championship points are Junior Rotax. And at the top of that championship table is dominated by Sam Pollitt Racing, with Charlie Hart and Ted Bradbury occupying the top two spots. Let's see how they've qualified and who else has taken one of the 34 grid positions in the super final as we go and join your race commentators, Jake and Alan. Well, it was dry, it's now absolutely chucking it down. Gabe Fairbrother and Ollie Stevens on the front row of the grid from Ted Bradbury and Blake Ticehurst. Then Leo Burgess and Ben Bartlett from Lomax and Baker, Bullock Carter and Charlie Hart. From the Charmander himself in 11th from Alex Cull, then Steve Duncan and Reza Sararuthan from Alex Adams Acton and Stephen Barnes. Then Ruben Kernahan and Bobby Rosier, Arthur Thacker and Alfie Richards. Then it is Harry Maynard alongside Harry Pallister, Isaac O'Shea and Matt Lambert from Archie Clark and Harry Hannum. And then we've got Ollie Kerr and Zaki Hussein from Finn Smith and Max Taylor. Behind them it's Archie Lyons and Alex Duncan and then it's Scrivener, Watson and Kulkarni. So they come to the grid, it's wet at Clay Pigeon, so watch your backs, folks. It's going to be an interesting one as they dive through to the first corner and off on the grass there. That looks like Charlie Hart and he's accidentally tagged into the back of Ben Bartlett. They go around and, oh my goodness, all three Harrys involved in that one. That's Hannum, Maynard and Pallister. They've all gone around as too has Max Taylor. Manages to get going again, but absolute pandemonium into the first corner. It was Charlie Hart. Look, he got two wheels on the grass, goes through. And he just got no way to stop into the side of Ben Bartlett. Big problems for him there. And whoa, Zaki Hussein. Quite Talk it. about avoiding action. I tell you what, that is a great piece of driving by Zaki Hussein. How he missed the carts in front of him, anyone knows. But a great piece of driving. Stephen Duncan qualified P13. The three car, third in the championship last year, Jake, has not made the start. No, indeed. And we're watching Sam Baker, who is trying to work his way through. That's Ewan Sharman just behind in the Argenti car, trying to slice it up the inside in the chicane. That's a much easier move to make in the wet. And through as well goes Barnes. Stephen Barnes. That's a great move by Stephen Barnes, by the way. He's taken advantage. Kilcarney in front now of uh, Charlie Hart is trying to recover down to Hans Hairpin. And, uh, well, he makes up, what, two, maybe three places there, Charlie Hart. Yeah, indeed. He manages to get back on Ben Bartlett, who he's already had a little bit of love taps from on the first corner. And through again comes Adi Kulkarni. Nice move as they complete the second lap. And it's Fairbrother out in front of Bradbury. Third place, Reese Lomax. Then it's Pearson Bullock Carter, who's worked his way up into fourth position in front of Leo Purchase. Oh, and that's Tice Hurst. Washes out in turn one. Oh, just a couple of inches off the line. You get on the marbles. That's it. You're done. Blake Tice Hurst, the... Honda Cadet champion two years ago, but uh, won't be winning this race today. Unfortunate, just runs wide. And once you're out there, Jake, there's no coming back. That's the difficulty because, of course, most of the weekend they've been running in the dry and the marbles go off on the outer end of the racing line. But once the rain comes down, it's an absolute nightmare. It's like you've got ice cubes under your tyres. You've got no chance of getting any grip if you run wide. So it's a very tricky situation still. Now, Fairbrother is not dropping Bradbury. Bradbury is going with him. Lomax and Bullock Carter are on their own race in third position and now Charman trying desperately to get past Ollie Stevens to get into B6. But the two leaders are out in front and Bradbury is not giving Fairbrother any respite. Yeah, and Bradbury and Fairbrother, two of the main protagonists in the championship this season. So this is important. Fairbrother will want to hold on out front and Bradbury will want to turn that position oh, over. Oh, that's Pearson Bullock Carter. He manages to get into third place on the inside of Lomax. Good overtaking move there from the 15. So Pearson Bullock Carter slices up the inside and there's great badinage further back. Barnes on the grass again as he goes wheel to wheel with you and Charman. I am not going to be shoved around this racetrack, matey boy. And he gets through. That's very nicely handled by Stephen Barnes. Very committed, disciplinarian as well as he comes back onto the racing line. And we're back on board with Baker, who is there in eighth place. Charman back down to ninth in front of Alexander Acton. And then Ruben Kernahan trying to work his way through the field with Zaki Hussein and Matthew Lambert just outside the top 20, as you can see on the screen. But uh, Harry Pallister managed to get going again after his moment. So too did Blake Tysurst, actually. He got going again, but sadly Harry Haddam, involved in the first lap incident, did not. Should point out that uh, we do have a bit of a problem with the timing. It goes first to 10th, then shows 21st to uh, 30th, then it will show the drivers after 30th, but he doesn't seem to come back and show 11th to 20th, but you can see them scrolling at the bottom of the screen so there you go 11 12 13 14 and 15 Ooh. all at the bottom of the screen now fastest lap set by ted bradbury that was a good battle going through the first corner it's brave to run round the outside 
So you can see that uh, Stephen Barnes and Ollie Stevens having a proper ding dong for fifth position at the moment, running wheel to wheel as they run through there. It takes two brave men to do that kind of battle. Charlie Hart still all over the back of Adi Kulkarni. Here he goes again into hands on the inside line. And that'll do nicely. So he manages to get the overtaking move and he's obviously got to work very hard to keep that door firmly shut because Kulkarni wants to get back on the inside again. Very close racing. Ted Bradbury now sending the fastest lap as Baker is going to lose out here on the inside line. Comes the 18 of Alex Adams Acton. So Adams Acton gets through. That's very nicely handled from the double barreled superstar as he runs his way through. And look at how close Bear Brother has now got pressure from Ted Bradbury, who set the fastest lap. He's done a 42 2 last time around. And Bradbury is all over Bear Brother. I kind of want to see what's going to happen between those two. This side by side. Bear Brother actually having to shut the door firmly in Bradbury's face. Yeah, and Bradbury, of course, can check his braking on what Fairbrother is doing in front. Gay Fairbrother lives just a couple of miles up the road from us, Jake. So he's local to us here in North Wales. And uh, Bradbury, but uh, he's had a quick look behind him. That's never, a, or not usually a good sign when they look behind because they're worried about who's behind. But he's had a good look behind, so he knows he's got nothing to worry about at all. He can just concentrate on what Fairbrother's doing in front and then concentrate on going up the inside Whoa. at some point, as indeed Charlie Hart does now. Nice move by Charlie. Charlie Hart launches on the inside of Ollie Kerr. Bye-bye, buddy. Junior Rotax continues here at Clay Pigeon in round five out of six of the Ultimate Karting Championships. And you can see Charlie Hart is really making mincemeat of the opposition. He is absolutely determined to carve his way through the field. That gets the move on Isaac O'Shea and Arthur Thacker in one fell swoop. Thacker drifts out wide as they come up towards Buttons. But this is such a tough circuit in the wet conditions. And Charlie Hart, having had the problem on the first start, he's looking to make up for it rapidly. He certainly is. Pearson Bullock Carter now sets the fastest lap as the carts come down to Billy's Blind. The, uh, the opening lap incident on the first after the start is quite unusual here now at, uh, in Billy's oh. Blind at Clay Pigeon as we get uh, carts. <laughs> Losing places in behind uh, our onboard cameraman. Yeah, that was Ray, that was Razor Severuthin. He had absolutely no response to Charlie Hart. Yeah, Billy's Blind used to be carnage through Billy's Blind, but then of course when they brought in the new front fairings, that uh, pretty much sorted that out. But of course in these conditions, Jake, anything can happen. Yeah, it's a very tricky circuit. You've really got to be incredibly ruthless to make these overtaking moves happen. As we come back towards the sharp end of the field, we're watching the fourth place battle. This is Lomax, Barnes, Charman and Stevens. And they have managed to pull out a bit of a gap now over the likes of Purchase, Baker and Adams Acton. So they're having a nice run of it as out in front. That's Bradbury. Bradbury's got through on Fairbrother. Now we didn't see where that happened, but Bradbury has got a relentless battle finally uh, sorted out on Gabe Fairbrother. We're back on board with Charlie Hart, who's his latest victim. Back on the inside, that's the 143, Archie Clark. There's not a lot he can do about it. He's just got to watch as Charlie Hart dances through on the inside. He really has got the measure of this clay pigeon circuit in the wet conditions. What about this for a puddle? <laughs> this must be about a Ooh. dozen carts in this group. And, and so that was a difficult manoeuvre to pull abreast. off. They're going to be three abreast in a turn one. Someone's got to bail out of this. Charlie Hart just watching for the momentum to come his way. That's the 13 backing off mid-corner. Alex Carl gets out of the way. And Charlie Hart's about to do three into one. That is amazing. Alex Adams acting as no response. And Charlie Hart finds himself in the top 10. Charlie Hart doing his best to uh, make a bid for his dad's Mercedes AMG yes, indeed. car. Yes, well, indeed. GT4 car. He wants, uh, he wants a little driver. That I, I suspect eh? he's actually had a little driver <laughs> already. But uh, yeah, he's on it today. Charlie Hart, championship leader, of course. Well, Charman got the move there on Reece Lomax. So Ewan Charman managing to get himself up into fourth position. That'll do nicely for him. As we watch coming towards us, a little bit of no man's land for Sam Baker. But the battle of the 10th position really has opened up. Charlie Hart has hit the front of that queue. Although he is now getting a little bit of pressure as running wide. Good battles all the way through this gang of drivers. There's an excellent waft of talent from 10th place down to about 24th. Absolutely incredible battles all the way through the field. And normally in these conditions, you, you quite often don't see so many carts battling in, in one space because the rain tends to sort them out, but look at it, underneath, through the horseshoe, incredible. Back on board with Charlie Hart. Yeah, he's side by side with Purchase. Purchase leaving him absolutely no room for negotiation. This is as far as you go, Sonny Jim. 
So now Charlie Hart's going to have to try again. He's got good acceleration off the turn, though. He read the situation well. Round the outside, towards Billy's blind. Nudges the back of Burgess slightly. Burgess comes back across the racing line. Charlie Hart's already got to the inside line. That'll do, and he's up to ninth. What a comeback. Great racing, great racing. Oh, Charlie Hart and, and showing that's, where he's the championship leader coming into this round. Now, that's a retirement, I think. Obviously, we saw from the side of the road, I think that might actually have been Stephen Duncan having pulled off the road on the formation lap. So he is still there by the side of the road watching as the rest of the field go by. That's heartbreaking for Stephen Duncan. Yeah, he's one of the solid front runners in this all season. So he's had a problem prior to the start and not made the start. So a bit of un 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 unfortunate uh, occurrence for Stephen, but uh, he'll be back next time, no doubt, at Three Sisters. Three Sisters in Wigan coming up in uh, a couple of weeks' time. And what a great circuit that is, one of the best circuits in karting. I think UKC, the only karting championship to appear at Three Sisters this year. Yeah, it's a phenomenal place and it really does promote no nonsense, no holds barred, old school karting. And that's what we like about it. Oh, off the circuit. A big moment for Harry Maynard. He's already had one moment in this race on the first lap, and I'm afraid at Hans Hairpin. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether he had assistance to get to that barrier or not, but it doesn't matter as far as the outcome is concerned. He still finds himself eating a complete spray of tyre dust. I'm not sure if you were going to go and place a camera, you could have placed it in any better a position than that, right in front of the camera he hits. Well, very unfortunate indeed, but I'm afraid there's not a lot he can do about that one except just watch from the rest of the race action from the sidelines. You can see the marshals already going to work to try and uh, put the tyre barrier back the way it should be. But uh, I think, actually, to be fair to uh, Harry Maynard, I think he's got going again. So he has managed to recover and return to the circuit. Meanwhile, Bradbury has extended a second and a half over Gabe Fairbrother. Pearson Bullock Carter third from Charman, who is the fastest man on track now, and he's gone sub 41. This has connotations for the championship, the championship lead with Bradbury now ahead of Gabe Fairbrother. Gabe's had a couple of poor rounds by his standard, not necessarily his fault. He was taken out at Glanny Gorse, of course, and then was involved in an incident at Rara that cost him a, lap, uh, a penalty. Uh, so he's had a couple of poor rounds, uh, and he'll be just pleased to be back in the mix and putting himself in contention for the final round. And what a showdown that's going to be between Bradbury and Fairbrother with a few of the other drivers, you know, nipping at the heels. Charlie Hart, of course, in a difficult situation. We could have four or five drivers in that showdown for the title by the time we get to the finish line at Three Sisters. Definitely, no doubt about it. I think it's, I think it should probably be between Bradbury, Fairbrother and Charlie Hart. But uh, you never know, somebody might come out of the pack and anything can happen on the weekend. So they're still battling away. This is a nice little tussle up on the inside of Oli Kerr. That's the 13 of Alex Cull. He gets the move for 14th position as the field is still dicing all the way through. And you can see, look, the rain has stopped and there's that dry line appearing through the chicane. That's also going to have ramifications for the other classes later on. We're going to get to see some interesting battles. A few drivers might want to try and come off that racing line to dive through on the inside. Then they'll be compromised with a dry line. Half the Thacker. Unfortunately, it looks as though he's been assisted to the, off, uh, to the uh, grass on the outside there. Very unfortunate for Arthur Thacker, but there's not a lot he can do about it except just get back in and carry on. Yeah, it's a little bit of a racing incident there, but uh, was assisted, as you say, from behind. Here's another battle going on down in Billy's blind, the 49 cart going through the picture. That's yeah, Bobby Rosier trying to uh, shake off his opponent. So Bobby Rosier working his magic to try and uh, filter his way through the field, but it's not easy when you've got so many opponents to try and shake off. It's, uh, and look, that was a fascinating situation. You could see there on the braking zone, down to Hans Hairpin. You cannot keep these carts in a straight line when it's this slippery here at Clay Pigeon. You've only got a certain amount of contact patch with that tyre, and you hit the brakes when you're at that speed trying to get down to that slow and apex speed. The back end is stepping out all over the place. You're trying to get control of the car. And watch them as they come around this time by. We're watching race leader Ted Bradbury, who's now extended a little bit of a gap over Gabe Fairbrothers, actually pulled it out to two and a half seconds. But when they get on the brakes in these carts on this circuit, it is so slippery. Look how quickly Pearson Bullock Carter's closed up to Gabe Fairbrother. He might lose out second place here. Angus Scrivener, Jake, look at that. Started P33, he's now P11. What a fantastic performance, and Archie Clark has made up a load of places as well. He's made up 13, started P25, so on the 1-4-3 cart, 
and Finley Watson, he started P34, that's right at the back of the grid, and he's 13th. Amazing. Finley Watson, great performance by those guys. There is some sensational talent all, out, all the way through this field, but out of the final turn, and he's going to be Ted Bradbury. He will take the chequered flag in fine style here. An excellent run from Bradbury. Chequered flag is his. Excellent run. Pearson Bullock Carter. He's not, he's not seen it, Jake. He hasn't seen it. He's too busy in the battle for positions. He's going round he's again. A, well, that's the thing. You've got to go round again. Well, if you're you not see sure. The, the checker flag just in the top right of the screen there from that uh, static camera covering <laughs> the S's. It's definitely waving, but the race leader, Ted Bradbury, has not seen it. So he's going around for another time. This is the battle for 14th, by the way. It's going right down to the wire as well. Fair play to Pearson Bullock Carter for closing up on Reese Lomax for second. But yes, look, Ted Bradbury still going around he and didn't see the checkered flag he's right in amongst all the back markers so right in amongst them. now there he, he is it. there he is there we go in the air so bradbury takes the win then from gay fairbrother it is in second pearson bullock carter rounds out the podium ollie stevens it is that came through for fourth place from reese lomax then came sam baker stephen bars making up nine isaac o'shea 15 archie clark 16 charlie hart in 10 watson made up 21 scrivener 22. Well, how about that in Junior Road Tax? I'm not quite sure at the end there that Ted Bradbury realised that he'd taken the check and flag. He was crossing the line in almost a blanket finish with a back marker and seemed to carry on for another few turns before maybe he realised he'd taken the win. Well done to him. It was really good in the early stages watching trackside. That battle between himself and Gabe Fairbrother was something to behold, I have to tell you, on what was a rapidly drying track, although still very damp. Let's go and see what Ted had to say when we caught up with him at the podium. A win today, fantastic result for you. Just talk us through it. Yeah, it was a good race. Um, obviously, got away with Gabe at the start, uh, managed to get into P2 from the start, and then um, chased down Gabe slowly, um, almost passed him at the start, and then got past him, um, and then led the race from there, which was really good, and it's good for the championship as well. And you're thanking who this weekend? Uh, I'm also thanking my mum, my dad, um, all my team, especially Sam Pollitt and Lewis Brown, for everything they do for me, making me a better driver and the setup as well. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. A few dramas for you at the last couple of rounds, but today went much better for you and keeps you in the championship hunt going to Wigan, one of your favourite tracks, I know. Yeah, Wigan's a very good track of ours and the teams, and it's going to be a good scrap between the three of us. But um, like you said, the last couple of rounds haven't given our way, but all things happen for a reason. Maybe it wasn't very fair, but can't do anything about it. Team have worked effortlessly over the past couple of weekends and the results are coming in, so we're happy. Okay, who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank my mechanic, Aidan, Ben at Ultima R, and everyone who got me out for the final, and my mum and dad. Best result in UKC this year for you. Um, it was getting close towards the end, third, could have turned into second maybe? Yeah, could have at the, right at the end. First had already gone by then, but we got to second right at the end of the race, but just couldn't make the move at the end. Who's responsible for your success this weekend? Um, Jack's Motorsport for just everything that they've done for me. When I've moved to them, they've just made it 100 times easier and a lot better for me as a driver. So now as we head to the season finale at Three Sisters, 17 points cover the top three. Charlie Hart slips to joint second with Gabe Fairbrother. Bradbury's win puts him 17 ahead. Reese Lomax is in the mix on 50 points deficit. Stephen Duncan missing that race costly for him, but he's an outside bet for the season finale. In Junior Rotax, anything's possible.